Okay. Um, we have a consensus on the average velocity from point three to point seven. Two point four two zero one five. Two point. Yeah. Let's say two point four two. Let's do that. <laughs> two point four two what? Meters per second. Meters per second. Okay. Yes. How about between point three and point six? Three point oh nine five. Three point oh nine. Closer to three point one. Three point one. Yeah, actually three point nine. Three point. Okay. Three. Let's see. Uh, point three or point five? Two. Two. Uh, four. Four. Three point nine eight one. Okay, let's go with four meters per second, meters per second, 0.3 and 0.4. That is 4.38 seconds. 3.8, rounding up to 3.8 meters per second. Okay. Um, so what's happening to these velocities? In what way? Making gradually bigger. Gradually bigger. Okay. It's important. Um, what are we really finding when we when we calculate this velocity right here, or this velocity, or whatever? What are we finding on the graph? We're finding like a slope. straight slope. Straight slope between two points. So this first one right here uh, would be the slope between. Let's see where we go. Point seven. Yeah. Okay, that's not the color. Slope from there to there. And then the next velocity we found would just be the slope straight from there to there, the slope from here to there. And that one, the last one we found would be the slope from here to there. Um, so does it seem like those values are approaching something? Uh, does it seem like they are? Not what is it, but does it seem like they are approaching some yes. Some, some yeah. number, yes. some number out there is getting closer and closer to that. Okay. Um, so as we get closer and closer and closer, if we get infinitely close, what are we finding mm -hmm. as we find these velocities? Yeah. What's that? Velocity. Velocity at a point, or equally the slope of the tangent line. Yeah? Yes. You draw the tangent line that touches that curve at only one place, then uh, we find the, yeah, that's what, we, that's what we're approaching as we keep taking points that are closer and closer and closer and closer. Now, this should sound familiar, right? Oh, okay. Some stuff we've done. Yeah. Have we done this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we have. Okay, good. Um, so, can anybody recreate for us the limit that we developed way back um, even before we started talking about limits? We were talking about trying to find the slope of the tangent line. Is that the one that's the like x, x plus x, x minus x. x. Yeah. Yeah. x minus yeah. over the radius. Are we going to put it in that stuff now? Oh boy. So, what we have here is x, and we're this is x, so this would be what? Y. Y, y or okay. y for this x, or how do we say that with function notation? F of x. And so let's say this is some other point. This is some other point. What is this? This is h, and this x value is what? X plus, x plus h, without getting specific. Uh, we could say 0 0.2 plus what? Or 0 0.3, not 0 0.2. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 gets us to 0 0.6, right? So specifically, h would be 0 0.6 here. This would be 0 0.3, and this, gives, uh, this would be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and this would be 0. Five, not 0.6, 0.5. Should have done different colors. Um, so, what would this be? Uh, x plus h. Okay. And you all, hopefully all, 
uh, just found four different velocities, and you see this pattern. Right? To find the velocity, we'll just take the final position minus the initial position. That will give us how far it traveled. And then we'll take the final time minus the initial time. That will give us 0.3 seconds that it took to go that far. And we'll take the distance, the change in distance over the change in time, and that'll be the velocity. Same for this one, 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 this one, this one, any other one that we would pick. So if we take the final one, that's f of x plus h right there, the final uh, distance, minus f of x, that'd be the initial distance over x plus h, that would be the final time, minus the initial time, x, then we have a formula that would tell us the slope between any two points. Okay? This is huge. This is huge. This is huge. You get this huge thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's right there. It's accessible. Mm -hmm. So that's basically y2 minus y1. Exactly. It's that. Yeah. You've got a y2, a y1, an x2, an x1. It's just the slope of a line. Do you see how big that apple is? Oh my gosh, it's like a grapefruit. I know. So, should we continue or should we ask questions? Um, continue, continue, and then if you have questions, ask questions. Uh, no questions? Right. Everybody's cool with this. Okay. Well, then. Are we going to apply that formula? Oh, yes. Yeah. Is it actually work? It's like something like that. Uh, we just, we well, we made it up, but we, it, we followed all the, you know, the, the rules of math and yeah, still graphs and slopes, and like it all works. Not all ideas that are legal work out very well. Yeah. This will work out. Okay. okay. So it finds just a straight slope, right? This yeah. finds just a straight slope between two points. Yeah. There's a formality. So if we um, if we cancel out these x's, then we're left with h down here. All right. And we keep moving the point closer and closer and closer. Do we keep getting a better and better approximation of yeah. what the slope, the tangent line would be? Yeah. 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 This, the tangent line's going to be a little steeper than this guy, a lot steeper than this one, a lot steeper than this one. We can see that on this graph. Okay. So the closer we move that point, the closer our uh, slope of our secant line is to the slope of the tangent line. Okay. So what do we want to do with h? Allow it to do what? Limit. Limit. Go to zero. So we're going to take the limit as h goes to zero. That's the slope to h. Okay? So this is the stuff that we've been training for. We needed limits to approach this problem, to even be able to attempt this problem. Uh, and now we have limits. Now we can do that. Okay? Um, so let's move. This way. So we did our experiment, right, with the balls? Agreed, are we all? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we do something before we start class or something? Same time. Mm -hmm. right. um, so we did our experiment, we got our data, we set the intervals that we wanted our, our little uh, sonic reader to take readings. Uh, and we got some data oh, like right. this. Okay. So I, I did this this morning and, and got some new data. And uh, so I, and I, I picked the, the best data that I could. I, I started here and went to there. I didn't take any of this data. I cut that out. I cut some stuff off at the end. Okay. So this is what we're left with. Between 0 and ending at 1 second, we have all these distances. Okay. And so we... Uh, See, we had a, a graph, well, I guess with eliminating some of that data, we had a graph like this. Okay, not bad. Not a perfect parabola, but it looks pretty good. Okay. Now, the problem with this data is that when we get down to point 0.4, we don't have any points that are closer to point 0.3 that we can actually use, right? So that's the limitation of the data, but this data makes a shape really close to what other kind of shape? Um, yeah. What? Mm -hmm. A 
parabola. Yeah, a parabola. Okay. So what we So it'd be nice if we had a parabola that was as close as possible to this data, right? Yeah. Are you laughing at no, what I, I think would be nice? No, I was thinking about something else. Of course. Yeah. I was gonna, <laughs> I, I was don't. honestly, do you want me to tell you? No, I don't. See? After class, maybe. I'm sure it was funny. <laughs> All right, so here's what we did. Uh, we did this real briefly. We made a quadratic regression. Okay, we took the data we had and made the best possible quadratic model out of it, which the, the graph of that quadratic model would be a parabola. Okay. So we did that quadratic regression. Okay. You can see the data with the parabola made from the data right over the top of it, which is pretty close. Then, just the parabola. Okay. So now this parabola becomes a model for what actually happened. It's not going to be the exact measurements that we took, but they're going to be really close. And a lot of the, like, the information, we could say, we'll say that this represents what happened, right? Because it's, it's pretty close. And then we can ask questions about uh, the velocity at any given moment, OK? So this is the equation to uh, that parabola. It's negative 5.7 lots of decimal places x squared plus 5.6 something x plus 0.833 or whatever ending up at 189. Okay. So <coughs> if that's the equation for this parabola, then and now the uh, let's see. So now this is zero seconds, but that's where I moved it all over. That used to be like the 0.2 seconds, which this first one started at. Ooh. This one started at 0.2, I just moved, I got rid of that zero and 0.1 and just moved it over to the very edge. So this should be one second. So 0.2, let's say, is Um, but no, that's not what we want to do. Because now point two is really over at zero. Oh, okay. You done did it. So this is zero seconds, which correlates to the point two seconds from before. But if we want to find the velocity of this, I used a backpack, the velocity of this backpack flying into the air <laughs> at zero seconds, okay. how are we going to do that? How do we find the slope of that tangent line? You make the function and make that. With the thing we just did. F yes. of x plus h. Yes. Right? Uh, so f of x plus h minus f of x over h. We're going to let h go to 0. Okay. And so what we're going to wind up doing is what we just finished doing in finding limits analytically, which was this h in the denominator is going to 0, and we can't just let it be 0. So hopefully what we can do is get an h up here to be, well, for there to be a factor of h up here, factor this out, let there be an h, cancel the h's, and then we can let h be 0, just like we've done several times before with uh, functions from the previous section. So, let's see. Well, if x in this case is 0, that's our x, this x right here, the initial point, right? Okay. Uh, let me choose some other point. If I use like yellow to represent that, some other point. Okay. Now it's not a set distance. We don't really know how far away this is. This is h away. So this point right here is x plus h. This right here is f of x plus h. And this is f of x. So let's write out some of these things. f of x is f of 0. So what is that? Mm -hmm. Or how do 
we figure it out. How do we figure out what that y value is? Three function. The function. We have to use a function. Here's a function, right? Here, down here. Here's the function. Mm. It represents that. It's that right. eight. Yeah, if we put a zero into this x and zero for this x, then we'll just be left with the constant term. So the height there is 0 0.83329. 0.83329. 0 0 0.29. 0 0.29. Yeah. No, 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 no,
So we have all of this stuff over H. What's going to happen now? H will cancel out this H will cancel out this H and this H, right? One of these H's. Okay. So we'll have negative five point all that stuff times H plus uh, what is this? Five. Five point six stuff times well one, right? So then, what do we do after that? Now we eliminate that, those H's. Plug in zero for H. Plug in zero for H. What happens here? Cancel. Yeah, we're left with one H here. When we, pl when we plug in that zero, zero times that will go away. So here we have this times one. And putting zero in for H doesn't affect that because there's no H's left. So now we're left with this number. What is this number? the importance of this number, what's the significance of this number. It is the limit as h approaches zero of this thing. The slope at that point. It's the slope at this point. And what does that mean in real life? It's the velocity. It's the velocity of the well backpack. Okay, so the back the backpack at that very second, that very second, at z but at the initial time, at zero seconds is going 5.65 whatever meters per second. Well, th this right here is like, like I said before, this is like the reason I really love math, because we had no way of knowing what speed this was going, what the velocity of this thing was at this exact moment, right? Even when we set this up, which was really smart and clever, we still had this problem where we put a zero in for h. But then if we just kind of mess around with the numbers a little bit, h's cancel out, we can plug in a zero. We know we're allowed to do that because of this whole last section that we did, the whole chapter we did, right? We just found a new function where these h's are canceled, and the limit will be equal to the original limit we wanted to find. And there's the velocity of that backpack at that moment. There's a, a real example. Let's work with some nicer functions that are just a little simpler. Okay. So we'll open up to chapter two. Yes, I think it's a chapter two book. Yeah. <laughs> Similar to the one we just looked at, uh, it's a parabola that opens down. We want to find the slope right here at this point. Okay, 
Okay, so at this point, zero, zero, we want to know the slope of the tangent line. Beautiful. Well, we just use that limit, okay, provided we understand what that limit is. It's not a magic limit, it's not a band aid for your homework. You understand what it is. We're going to use this limit right here. We'll say f of t plus h, since we're using t's here, and it's f of t over h. Okay, so f of t plus h, what's that? Uh, 3t plus h minus t plus h. So 3 times t minus, uh, sorry, plus h minus uh, t plus h squared. Why do you use t? Probably stands for time. Okay. Well, what's t though? It's zero in this case. It's zero. So three times well, just h minus just h squared. Okay. So this is uh, f of t plus h, but as simply as we can write it. So f of t plus h, right there, 3h minus h squared minus f of t. What's what's t again? Zero. And what's f of zero? Over here. Over here. How do we know? What's wrong with t? What's wrong with t? What's wrong with t? Where? It's t plus h squared. How do you write t squared? Well, t is zero. T oh, we're saying t is zero. Oh, we're saying t is zero? Okay. We are. Okay. okay, that makes sense then. t is zero, so what's f of zero? And how do you know? Uh, you put zero in there. Also, in the problem, they gave you zero upon zero. That's a point on the graph, which means that if you put in zero for x, you must get out zero for y. And zero for h. Limit so h goes to zero of three h minus h squared minus nothing over h. Cancel this h, and one of those h's becomes the limit as h approaches zero of let's see three minus h. If you put zero in for h, you're left with three. Three. The slope of that line right there is three. So the slope. What's that? Sure. If this were uh, meters and this were second, that'd be the velocity, three meters per second. Also, could be, they didn't specify. This could be uh, dollars, and this could be hours, and this could be uh, whatever you want, inches and years. Anything that can be measured, one thing versus another. Okay. And actually, three inches per year is. Pretty close to how fast Hawaii is moving towards Japan. We talked about that. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so I have one question. When you were putting in, you know, uh, okay, the, like the third line down. How come the three t plus h didn't change? Like the t plus h didn't change, but the second t plus h changed. This didn't change. Yes. But this did. Yes. Um, From the equation above it. From this. Oh, shoot. Okay. I didn't, I already asked that question. Oh, okay. I was looking at the wrong person. All right. Great cue, Holly. I know. I really worked hard on that one. Good to hear. Good to hear you're proud of that. So if you want to know the slope at a particular spot, at a particular x value, we need to find an expression uh, that tells us what the y value will be if we add a little to it. Okay, that'll be the f of t plus h, or f of x plus h. Then we're going to subtract the initial y value, which in, in the case of a specific point, will actually have a specific value. It'll be a y value at that x. We put in that x and find that y. Okay. We subtract those two, and we divide by the distance between them horizontally, h. That's the distance between them. Change in y over the change in x. That's all this is. Delta y over delta x. one that's just a slight bit more challenging. Ten. Oh boy. Ten is a little bit more challenging.
challenging. Tim's, Tim's good. So h of t equals t squared plus 3. Beautiful. So what is the slope at x equals negative 2? I want you guys to try that out yourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Feeling like you don't know what to do is fine. Okay. But not doing anything is not fine. Don't worry about what I'm doing up here. Do it. I don't think we put X instead of T. If you think you really need to.
So we're gonna show us how this goes. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm not waiting now. Uh, more. What's anyone else wants to help us to try it? Okay. I'm not gonna use very good because I'm gonna get the potato. You gotta, you gotta plug it in that way. Yeah. Okay. Cause I have my way to do it, but you want to do it right here. For right now. So we have. So we got. Let's see. We got eight to two there, and I'm just gonna split this bank right down to eight. Oh. Give me an. Yeah. It's black. Okay. I'm just gonna go H T plus H, which would be <coughs> three, and it's gonna and then twenty oh. and twenty two. Oh, hold on. So what we're gonna do is what is T? T is negative two, so So let's do that. Let's do that before we do all that stuff that you're doing. Okay. Uh, just for now, just as a beginner. Since it's since. It's okay. Since we have negative two for uh, t, just put negative two in here. Okay. So we got negative two squared plus negative two h plus h squared. And I was putting that little slope formula where we have like t of h minus h of t. Is there Anything well, this will also be negative two squared right here. But does does everybody agree with that that last thing that's written down? Negative two squared no. by plus negative two. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Uh, minus four H. What do you think about that, Aaron? Minus four H. Mm -hmm. I don't In my own way. We should have two negative two h's that add together to get negative four h. Is you get negative two times negative two. Yeah. And you'll have negative two times h and another negative two times h when you have two parentheses. Right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so negative two times h and h times negative two should give you negative two h minus two h, which will be negative four h. Plus three. That's a horrible three. It's going to be better than this. Plus three. Then we subtract. It's going to be five. Two squared. It's going to be subtracted by three. That's going to be all over eight. Plus three. Can I stop there? Or? Yeah, uh, well. Here's what, one thing, it's negative two times negative two, right? We're, we're multiplying this by itself. Yeah. So like those parentheses 
and it didn't um, help with you, even if you only had two times itself. So that should be this guy right okay. here. And this minus negative two squared plus three, and then it would become minus two squared minus three. Maybe you distribute that negative to start with. Okay. Uh, two squared is four, so here we have, let's just, okay. we'll work it from here. Minus four h plus h squared plus three. Uh, minus four minus three, so minus seven over h. Right. And then we have three minus seven is negative four. Four minus four go away. So we should really be taking the limit as h goes to zero. The limit as h goes to zero of negative 4h plus h squared over h. h cancels with this h and one of those h's. So we're left with the limit as h approaches zero. Negative 4 plus h. We plug zero in for h now and negative 4. Just that, except for I think I just I just it wrong. You had yeah, you had a negative two. You should have negative four. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. I gotta try. That'll do. Very good. Yeah, it's like doing variable first and trying to work. Okay. <coughs> Any questions about that? That was a little bit more challenging. We're gonna have to put. Um, you know, a plus h in there and square those parentheses. Okay. That'll happen in some of these functions. We have to square parentheses with x plus h or cube for parentheses with x plus h. Does everybody feel like you got it? No problem. Okay. All right. Well, what we have here is called this right here. It's called the derivative no. at a point. So the derivative at a single point. The slope of that line, negative four. So to find the, the derivative of a point, we just need to uh, do exactly this over and over and over, whatever the, the function is. Uh, let's say, could we take this function right here, t squared plus 3, and not find the derivative at negative 2, but find the derivative at 1? Could we do that? Derivative at 1. How would that go? How would that look different from this problem? What's that? Everybody get, catch that? All the negative twos would be ones. That's the only difference. Negative two would become one. So we put a one there. We put a one right there. Right? Uh, we still add three to that one squared. And then this would all be uh, a result of having one in there instead of negative two. Could we find the derivative at five? Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the function does exist at five. It's a continuous function. Uh, what would that look like? How would that look different? Put five in there. Instead of one, instead of negative two, you put five. Okay? So, let's take this as an example. Okay. We can find the slope at any point that we want using that limit. But, if we want to find the slope at several different points, we're left finding that limit over and over and over, replacing the last number with the new number that we want to plug in, replacing negative two with one, or one with five, or whatever. You see where I'm going? Now to do this limit over and over and over. And in the end, we just wind up doing the same thing every time to just a different number. Okay? So rather than taking this limit, um, say it was negative 2 squared plus 3. Uh, let's see. This would have been negative 2 plus h squared plus 3 minus negative 2 squared plus 3 over h. Okay. Rather than taking this and putting negative 2 uh, 
uh, I guess you could put a plus h there. Instead of putting a negative 2 there, and a negative 2 there, or taking out that negative 2 and replacing it with a 1, or taking that negative 2 and replacing it with a 5, instead of doing all that, why don't we just leave it a variable, and then we'll do all the work, and at the end, we'll have this new function that looks different. It, it, it's got some uh, calculations that you have to do. Um, but instead of using negative 2 or 1 or 5, we'll just leave a t, or x, or whatever the case is. And here we'll use a t. We'll go through here. t will go through all of these changes. And at the end, we'll have an expression with t in it, where now we can plug in the, the specific t values at the end, after all of that stuff, that complicated stuff, has been done. Okay? So forget about plugging in negative 2 or 1 or 5 or whatever. We'll put in t. And we'll just leave it as t. Right? So we took t plus h and we put it into the function. That becomes t plus h squared plus 3 minus f of t, which is t squared plus 3 over h. Right? The original function, I'll just write it down here. The original function was t squared plus 3. Right there. I don't know that is f of t. That's the original function right there. And here's the function, the value of the function, when you add a little distance to t. You add a little bit more to t, you go h over from t. And that'll be the y value at that point. Okay. So now we just need to do all the stuff that we did for negative 2, or 1, or 5, or whatever, and do it to t. Let all t go through all those changes, because the same thing is going to happen. Every time you do this derivative, the same thing's going to happen, so we might as well just uh, do it to the variable and let it go through all those changes. So this will be t squared plus 2th plus h squared. That's this part. Plus 3, that's that right there. Minus, I'm just going to distribute this negative, negative t squared minus 3 all over h. Look what happens there. We get a t squared minus t squared. A 3 minus a 3. Okay. Up here it looked like 7 minus 7. Right? That's that constant term going away. Now if we put in a, a negative 1, it would, there would be some number minus another number, and that just goes away. So the t squared terms cancel each other out. The constant term cancels uh, each other out. And now we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2th plus h squared over h. Now all the h's get canceled out. You'll notice here's 2 times the original t. So if you look right here, 2 times the original negative 2 gave us negative 4. Plus h squared, plus h squared. Right? If we keep putting numbers in there, the same things are going to happen every time. So at this stage, if we put in negative 2 or 1 or 5, we're always going to be here multiplying 2 times the original number. But now at this step, we can, since everything has an h in it, we can cancel out this h with this h, one of these h's. Now it's the limit as h approaches 0 of just 2t plus h. We put a 0 in for h, and we're left with 2t. <laughs> So we went from one function, the original function, that when, let's say we graph it, we get this parabola function. Okay. Now we've gone to another function, a totally different, though closely related function. Okay. And what we did was go through all of the steps that we would have gone through to find what were we finding. Like back here, what were we finding at negative 2? What was this? The slope, the negative 2, the derivative. At that point, the slope at that point, yes. Okay. So we go through all the same steps of finding the slope. Okay. Now this isn't the slope, right? This is a function. The slope is a number. Okay. But what will, if we put a number into t and we get a number out of this function, what will this function tell us? The slope of that, the slope of that graph at that point. Okay. So, but 
this is this is the derivative derivative of f of t. So we have the derivative at a point, which is a slope. We have the derivative of a function, which is another function that tells us the slope when we plug in an x value or a t value, whatever value. And since the original function was f, a lot of times what we'll call this is f of t. Or f, sorry, not f of t, f prime of t. So f prime is what we call the derivative of f. And f prime is a function that tells you what about f. What does f prime tell you about f? The slope, the tangent line, and whatever x value you plug in there. Okay? Which is really amazing that we had this function up here, t squared plus 3, this graph right there. And then imagine uh, from the very first day of class, like how would you find the slope of that tangent line? And developing this limit, okay? Now, amazingly enough, we have the ability to find the slope at any point that we want. And even more amazingly, we're able to find a new function. It's just two times the x value. It's a, such a simple function. And if we just plug in an x value, or a t value, into this function, something as simple as multiplying that value by 2 tells us the slope at that point, the slope of the tangent line at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Well, so now we want to know the slope at, at 6. What's the slope at 6? 12. It's 12. That fast, you know the slope at 6. So we're going to come over here and go out to normal. Uh, well, mm -hmm. that's way out here. What's the slope at 3? 6. Six. Slope at 3 is 6. Slope at 2 is 4. Four. Four. Slope at 1 is 2. Four. Simple. So amazing that we can find a function that tells us the slope of the original function at any point, and it's as simple as just multiplying that x value by 2. Um, let's see. One more time. So let's, um, let's just have some practice. Um, number 17. the derivative at a point and the derivative of a function. The derivative of the function can be used to find the derivative at any point. The derivative at a point is what kind of a thing? Slope. Slope, and the slope is a what? It's like a line. And the line's a line. The slope of the line is what? It's a velocity. It could represent velocity. The rate of change. It's the rate of change of the function at that point. Speed. Or it's the Something. starts with S. Speed. Slope. That's the speed slope, right? It's the slope. Specifically speaking, for this graph, the derivative at a point is the slope. The slope is a we said the slope. The slope is what? What is the slope? The slope is speed and rate of change. All in one. It can it, it's very closely related to the speed. It, it is the rate of change of the function. It is. Are you saying it's the slope of a tangent line? The slope of a tangent line is the rate of change. Oh my. Slope is a number. Oh, okay. It's not a function, oh, oh it's not a line, oh, and really it's not a curve, okay. and it's not, it is a number. It is a number that represents the rate change in y, or the change in x, the rate of change, how fast the function is changing. Okay. So let's find the derivative of this function. This is the derivative of the function, so okay. it would be an 
the end, what you would have is a new function of x in it that now tells you the slope at any point. So So this is always the, a challenging thing. We've been um, doing composition of functions for a while. Okay, that's all this is. Here's one function, x plus h. x plus a number is, is a function. We're going to take that function 
and put it into the function f of x. Okay? So if you think about it, in the numerator, we need this piece and we need this piece. Okay? Well, f of x is that. It's just what's given in the beginning. f of x plus h is when we take x plus h and put it into the function. Okay, so f of x plus h. Okay, that's where we take the x out. And what goes in there? x plus h. Let's uh, color code this. Color code. Uh, so x plus h in green. X plus H. X plus H. That's, I think it's like the number one mistake early on in finding the derivative is that uh, maybe we'll take this and just add H or add an H after each X or um, multiply that by H sometimes. It, it can get a little weird. But all this means is to put X plus H in for X wherever you see X in the function. Okay? So when we square this, we get x times x is x squared, x times h, and another x times h. We add those together to get two of them, two x plus h or two x h, uh, plus an h times an h is h squared, plus x plus h minus one, two x squared plus four x h plus two h squared plus x plus h minus one. Okay. What is this? of x plus h, and so that's all we have so far. Put it as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus x plus h minus 1. Okay, that's f of x plus h. And then we can subtract 2x squared plus x minus 1. 2x squared plus x minus 1. And then divide that by h. Mm -hmm. H. And then we <coughs> Oh, we'll distribute the negative. Yeah. The negative. We distribute the negative. We'll get a two x squared minus a two x squared. We'll get uh, minus an x. We get an x minus an x. We get a one plus a negative. A plus negative plus one minus a negative one. They cancel each other out. Now we get the limit as h approaches zero. What do you know about? Notice about all the terms that are left. An h. An h. We could. In case any, this has been confusing, we can write it differently. Every one of them has a factor of h, so we could factor out that factor of h. For x plus 2h, there's, there's one h factor left, plus 1, one for h. h cancels h. Limit as h approaches 0 of just what's left right there when we factor out that h. And then you could plug in 0 for Plug in 0 for h. For x plus 1. It's amazing. We have this function now. It's it's what do we call it? Derivative. The derivative. Yeah. And how do we write that with function notation? F. f little apostrophe means prime. That's one word. F prime of x is the derivative of f or derivative of f. F prime is a derivative of f. So f prime is the derivative of f, so what does that mean? f prime is a derivative, is, means what? It's the derivative of what? The function. Slope. At no? any point on it's not, well, okay. It isn't the slope, but it's a way to find the slope. So the, the derivative of f, which is. It's uh, the number that represents the slope. The relationship between the x and the the x and the slope. Yeah, it's a relationship. It's a function of x turning x through the simple, very, very simple process into the slope at x on the original graph. Uh, so a function which uh, relates x to the slope uh, at
original function has a slope uh, at a particular x value, and this function right here, this formula, will give us that slope for any x value, which is amazing. This seemingly impossible thing to know the slope at, that a, a graph could have a slope at a point. And what we knew previously was that a, a slope needed two points. We needed to find a slope between two points. That's the only way that can work. And to find the slope at one point seemed weird enough. And then we were able to do it. And then we were able to even find another function, which is really simple. I would, I, I would imagine at, at the beginning, uh, not knowing the answer to this, that the, the function that would tell me the slope to this function here would have to be really crazy. Like lots of square roots and denominators and maybe some sines and cosines. I don't know what would be involved, but it's, it turns out to be an incredibly simple function that tells us the slope at any point that we want. Okay. Um, so given that, here's just some different notation. 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 <laughs> okay, so please the derivative of a in my test. You are asking if I'm the slope of the tangent line here at multiple points in one function, and once you find the derivative, once you could plug in the same derivative for each of those points that you're trying to find the slope of their tangent line. Um, oh. If I ask for the derivative of f, I'm looking for a function. A function like this one. If I ask for, usually what we'll say is, what's the slope of the tangent line at x equals three? Uh, right. Uh, to find the, the particular value of the derivative at a point. Um, okay. So f prime of x, just because it relates to f of x, and we put that little mark there, and it, it lets us know that we're talking about the derivative. Um, if we're not talking about f of x, we're talking about y equals something, a function y equals, why do you think we might represent the derivative by dy over dx? Excellent. That, that highlights the... So it's like h. This is? Like the d. The d is like h, yeah. yeah. So this d is like h, and this d is like a y. A y, yeah. What it really is, if we want to talk about the slope of a line, we're talking about the rise over the run, we're talking about the change in y versus the change in x. How do we represent? Delta. Yes, delta y, delta x. Okay? Why dy? Because this, really, this is really y. Because this lowercase d, delta starts with d, this little d represents an incredibly small change in y and an incredibly small change in x. Okay? That d doesn't represent a specific value, it just represents a small change, a really, really small change. And that's really what we're doing. We let this point be maybe the point where we want to find the slope, and we let that difference between the two be so incredibly small that it's, you know, it's just unimaginably small. Uh, thousands of paper widths, perhaps. Okay. Um, let's see. We could do. These are, as I keep writing more down, they become less and less common. You can say y prime. That works too. Um, we can say. This is like saying, take the derivative of the function. Okay. The derivative of f of x. Okay. Um, another one. Let's say the derivative of y. Okay. You can say the first derivative of y, the second derivative of y. Third derivative of y. Third derivative of y. Okay. Because you can imagine I can take the derivative of a function. This function is also going to have a slope at, at whatever points we want to talk about. We can take the derivative of that one. We can take the derivative of that derivative. And uh, the significance will be 
what do those derivatives all mean? Right? We, won't, we won't get there until a few more sections from now. Um, but there's a, a way to represent multiple derivatives or higher order derivatives. Okay. So these are going to be really common. Y prime is pretty common. This one, we use it this more than than that. If you want to say the derivative of a function, we'll write d dx <coughs> next to it. And then this one is is really one that we just kind of need to be familiar with because they use it on the AP test. And um, if they ask you what's this, then you want to know what that is. Okay. What's this second derivative? So, okay. So, just the last couple of things. Um, the non-existence of a derivative at a point. Okay. Where a derivative, we talk about how limits don't exist, and now we'll talk about uh, basically for the same reason why derivatives may not exist. Okay. Um, so one would be that. So let's just say that's a function, like an upside down absolute value or something that. So right here, we want to know, you know what's the derivative at that point. Which, if I ask you what's the derivative at that point, what am I asking for? The slope. The slope of the tangent line. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, uh, we could argue this from a, a limit standpoint. Like the derivative from the left and the derivative from the right would have to be approaching the same thing. Okay. Well. What's the derivative from the left looking like? Positive, positive slope. A positive slope, you know, something like that. Just be a kind of a continuation of this straight line. All the, the slopes along the straight line are all the same. Just a line has one slope. Well, from the other side, though, it has a slope like that. And they're not, it, it is like an instantaneous change between this slope, as we go from left to right, from this slope to this slope. There's no gradual change from one slope to the other. From the right or from the left, they're approaching different slopes. Would yeah. this be like where there's conjoint functions where it has like the little bracket and then it's like when it's from say zero to two and then uh, from... So well, piecewise functions. Yeah, piecewise functions. Is that what we're talking about right now? Um, there, we can construct questions that deal with this very issue uh, using piecewise functions. Right? So just like how we had that problem on the test, that extra, extra credit problem, where I said, uh, you know, find values for a and b, the slope and the y-intercept, so that this function is continuous, right? and it was something like this, a, a straight line here, a straight line there, a straight line between them, and try to figure out what the values of a and b would have to be to connect those two. Okay. Well, we made it continuous, but is it, does it have a derivative? Is it differentiable? at this point, right here. Does that have a slope at that point? No. No. This slope right, is like this. This slope's like this. And there's no slopes in between there. There is no change from this zero slope to this negative slope. The slope from the right and from the left approach different values. Those slopes are different. Okay. But we could have something like, um, like here's a similar problem. Here's a line here, and here is a line over here with a, a slightly different slope. Let's make it even more obviously different. And I'll give you a quadratic in the middle, an a, b, and a c, right? a squared plus b, x plus c, a, x squared plus b, x plus c, right? Find those values so that the parabola between these two would not only connect them, not only make it continuous, but differentiable. Right? So that this slope leads gently and perfectly into the slope of the parabola. And the parabola comes over here, and the slope at this side perfectly leads into this line over here. Right? That's, that's another day's problem. But there, we, we could make problems like that. Um, 
But in the, in the end, what we have is the non-existence of a derivative, a, a function that's not differentiable at this point. <coughs> right? Not differentiable at that value of x. So another example would be just where it's not continuous. If the function is not continuous, then there's no way that it could be differentiable. Here's a one function that's uh, discontinuous. Okay. And by the same reasoning, the, the, the slopes of the tangent lines here, this slope is like this, slope is like this, this slope is like this, this slope is like that. So the slope from the right is approaching you know, like this thing. Okay. And this one. Well, now the slope between this point and other points is approaching well, something completely different. Because right? we want to know the slope at this point. The slope between this point and points over here are approaching this value here, the value of this slope. And to other points, it's completely, completely different. If it's discontinuous this way, with just a hole, it does have a limit, but it doesn't have a slope. There is no point to be tangent to. So you could possibly have a tangent line at a point that doesn't exist. Um, and there's one more. How about the slope of the tangent line to that point? Hmm? The slope itself, the number would be over what? Zero. Over zero. There would be no run at all for it. Because this looks like a vertical line. So vertical lines have what kind of slope? Undefined. Undefined. It's over zero. We could go from here, we could rise as much as we want, and the run would be nothing. It would be over zero. So this would be an undefined slope. So the derivative wouldn't exist there not differentiable. What was the one that you said before this? The one that I said before this? Didn't these ones? Was it not, so just like not at that point? Not at that point. Other places, sure, but not right there. Not right there. Right there. X, we could say they're not differentiable at x because, well, the, the reason we can give is it's not continuous, it's discontinuous at x, so it couldn't possibly have a derivative. Uh, if it's just a gap, just a hole right there, that wouldn't work. If it's a, a big jump right here, it, it couldn't possibly have uh, a tangent line to that point. Those are fairly intuitive. But of course, we're going to be dealing mostly with functions that are nice and are differentiable everywhere, they are continuous, and have all these nice features about them. If we have some function, let's say that's it. that. So this is f. Okay. And we want to talk about f prime. We want to graph f prime. Well, over here, what, what are the values of f prime? The value of f prime represents what about the original function? The slope. The slope. What kind of slopes do we see here? Positive. They're, they're going 
up, they're rising, so they're positive. How about right here? What about here? And here? Zero. Okay. So that, that's going to be pretty easy. What's the value of the slope here? Zero. So where should the derivative, the function, be? At zero. At y equals zero. Right there. What about over here? What kind of values for, the, for f prime should we see to the left? What kind of slopes do we have? So what kind of values of the slope do we have? So where should the derivative function be? Which is where on the graph? Zero. 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 Up here? No. It's First is the right hand side. The right hand side. The first quadrant. The first quadrant. Yeah. This quadrant. Yeah. Ah. Well, here's the, 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 the tough thing that for most students at this stage. Over here, right from here, we can see the slope is zero. Remember, the derivative tells you the value of the slope. Okay, that's all it tells you. The y value of the derivative is the slope of the original function. So what we should see to the left is all positive slopes, right? Positive slopes. So positive values of the derivative. So values above the y-axis. And we're to the left of this point right here. We should see all positive slopes. All of these guys should be somewhere up here. The values should be positive in some way. You mean above the x-axis? Like what did I say? Above the y-axis. Oh, yes, above the x-axis. Okay. okay. Over here, what kind of slopes do you see? Negative. negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes. Okay, pretty big negative slope. Not a very big negative slope. Okay, big negative slope. And again, not a very big negative slope. And what slope do we have here? Zero. Zero. And what kind of slopes do we see in between this zero and that zero? Negative. Negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes. And then this has to come back down. So this is like the biggest negative slope that we'll see. You see the connection between. Big negative slope, big negative, biggest negative y value that we'll see there. Okay? We come over here. What's the next significant place? What's that? Yeah, that's you. This is out of inverse. The next one is uh, zero is really, again, handy. This one also, zero slope. What kind of slopes do we see between here? Positive, 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 positive slopes. Coming back down to zero. And what kind of slopes do we see here? Negative, all negative until we get to right there. Negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes. But on this side of zero, we should get to see positive slopes again. If the mistake that gets made a lot is seeing a connection between the positive slope of the original function and you start looking at the slope of the derivative. Don't worry about the slope of the derivative right now. Worry about the value of the derivative, the y value of the derivative. Okay? So, Positive slope from here until apparently infinity, we should see positive values of the derivative. This might be a positive one value, so right about here, so the value of the function that is the derivative should be about one. Not the slope of it, but the actual y value of it. But the big help is seeing those zero slopes, zero slope, zero slope, zero slope, zero slope. And that connection to the zero, the actual x-intercepts of the. Have a good day. Now you have to watch what does the box say. What does the box say? Yeah, just type in what does the box say. This is the YouTube. Quite incredible.